It's the rarest creature. Rarest. It's the rarest creature. Uh, Infiltrating the saltwater video. We were coming up here to shoot the saltwater video, which I might as well do at the moment. Uh, this is the introduction to the saltwater video. One of the rarest creatures in here, uh, my partner Guy Griffin. Uh, it'll probably be a while before you see him again in a video because uh, it's fishing season. But what I was actually going to say in the start of the saltwater video is this right here. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's getting there. Jonathan is working hard to create something that will become something more is the best way to say it. Uh, this is his creation. He has been uh, given the go to set up a new tank in the front of the store. So you're going to want to watch this because it's going to start to take form between now and next week and we'll give you updates on that. So a full Apex system is what's going to complement this whole system. Uh, Jonathan is also putting that together as well. So if you want your own water changes, if you want your own reading, if you want basically a computerized aquarium, uh, we're going to be able to show you how to do that very, very soon. And you will be able to walk in and see it as it's operating on this tank that he's setting up. So wanted to throw that at you real quick. As long as we have them, we've got these Fishy Business shirts right now, five bucks each. I've got them in lots of colors and lots of sizes, so it's kind of cool, and uh, I'm sure they will go fast. The last batch did, and we've never sold them for five bucks. We usually sell them for 10 or 12, so come check them out. Okay, so I am going to give the camera over to Reagan to show you all the saltwater fish. That was just an introduction that we did, but I did want to show you a couple new setups that just came in, because uh, they bear you knowing. Uh, we, we don't typically discount a lot of things right now because most things are map priced. However, Guy put together this system. It's the Sephora 90 gallon. It's $22.79, but it comes with almost everything. Uh, you've got your stand, your canopy, a beautiful tank, your return pumps, rocks, your protein skimmer, your light, everything. So it's a great little introductory reef tank. And one of our most popular stands and canopies, the Edisto Blue, this has been done for a 110. Um, so you can kind of see that. It will, of course, work on a 75 or a 90, but this is a beautiful, beautiful way to display a 110 or a little bit larger tank. But this is a beautiful color blue that's, I can promise you, is more vibrant when you're actually in here looking at it. So come in here and look at it. Um, very, very cool standing canopy that just came in. And I am going to turn things over to Reagan and let's look at some saltwater fish that came in this week. Hi guys, it's Reagan. Let's go look at my fish. All right guys, so this is my favorite fish that I got this week. This is the banana wrasse. It's the first time that I've been able to get them in. Um, I believe this one is a male just because of the electric green on his anal, dorsal, and caudal fins. These guys are deemed not reef compatible just because it's a larger body wrasse that's going to go after your shrimp and some of your crabs and snails. These guys might be a little more aggressive. Some people say they are aggressive, some people say no. Um, people have had luck with them in more of a peaceful community tank. Some people have great luck with them in an aggressive tank. So take that as you may when you decide that you want to try the banana wrasse. Um, these guys are very active and require plenty of rocks for hiding. Um, do recommend having a lid. Um, Rasses can be kind of flighty when they get scared, so he might jump out of the tank, so a lid would be recommended. These guys, though, are super cool because they actually will eat bristle worms. Um, now, like I said, they're not deemed reef safe, but they're not going to eat your coral. So this is the Oriental Sweet Lips. He has an incredibly beautiful body and pattern with a coloration that resembles a mosaic of whites, browns, and yellows. It is a carnivore. Um, their diet should consist of small shrimp, crustaceans, small fish, and worms, which is why it's deemed not reef safe because it will eat smaller fish, anything that's going to fit in its mouth, as well as shrimp. Um, these guys are best kept in fish-only tanks. They need plenty of swimming space and plenty of rock for hiding. So I got in a little juvenile zebra moray, and it is so cute. We have a big one in the store. Her name is Ursula. Um, so you guys might have seen one that looks like this before. These guys are actually fairly peaceful and they are more reef safe. Um, these guys are not going to eat your fish. Um, if anything, they're going to eat crabs, which is why they're deemed not reef safe because they might eat some of your cleanup crew. 
Um, these guys are actually a really good community fish. Like I said, it poses no threat to its fish tank mates or the aquarist when you're reaching in to clean or do any type of maintenance. And these guys are fairly active and they are going to be out most of the day, so you're going to be able to see them a lot. Their diet should consist of crabs, crayfish, and larger pieces of meat like clams, squid, and scallops. So this is the big eye squirrelfish. It's bright red with thin white outlines on its fins. As you can tell, they have very large eyes. Their center pupil is very large and black, which obviously gives this guy a very unique look. This guy is crazy looking, but he's so cool. I'm so excited. Um, this guy needs a large amount of rocks with hiding places. It's more of a nocturnal fish, so it's more gonna hide when the lights are on and it's gonna come out when it's dark to swim in search of food. Now this guy will eat invertebrates such as worms, crustaceans, and different types of stars. Um, when first introduced to the aquarium, I would recommend trying to feed him with live, such as ghost shrimp and things like that. Their diet though does vary between shrimp, freeze-dried shrimp, and chopped up marine meats. So this is a fox face. He's kind of stressed because I've only had him just for a few hours, which is why he looks like he's got like a marble pattern on his body. Once he is not stressed out, his body will be a bright, solid yellow. And you can kind of see that in some of his spots right there. That's what his whole body's going to look like. Pretty peaceful. They're not going to be aggressive towards other fish, but they will be aggressive towards other types of rabbit fish. I do want to point out that these guys are venomous. All of those spines on their dorsal fin have venom. So be very careful when you reach your hand into your tank to do any type of maintenance as if they stab you, that would not be very good. They are generally reef safe if they are well fed. Typically, I've never heard of a fox face going after any type of coral because all of ours are kept very well fed. Just ask Kate. He feeds all of his fish like four times a freaking day. Like his fish are fat, okay? But if these guys are not well fed, they can go after some of your LPS and some of your soft corals. This is the Zoster butterfly, and unlike most butterflies, these guys are actually deemed reef safe. Um, it's going to be kind of like the rabbit fish in that if it's not well fed, it may go after some of your soft corals, but for the most part, these guys are pretty much reef safe. Uh, Sir Richard told me about this and said if you can ever find one, get one because it's more of a reef safe butterfly. So I did. The Zoster butterfly are pretty shy and should be provided with multiple hiding places and a lot of rock work. Um, these guys, their diets should consist of frozen foods um, that contain algae because they are um, omnivores so they eat algae and meat. And they're also going to eat things such as mysa shrimp and brine shrimp. So this is the white cheek tang. These guys actually come from Hawaii, although they also come from Indonesia, so I'm assuming this is where this one has probably come from since we still can't get any fish from Hawaii. These guys are reef safe. Like I said, they are a tang, so they are gonna be more reef safe. Their pectoral, anal, and dorsal fins are dark blue with highlights at the tips. The tail is blue with a yellow stripe down it. And they also have yellow stripes running along their body against the anal and dorsal fins as well, which you can see outlined. These guys are also known as the gold rim tang because of those gold lines running down their bodies. Um, the white cheek tang is aggressive towards other tangs, but it is peaceful with every other fish in the tank. And although tangs will eat meaty foods, it is important that they are offered a lot of marine seaweed and algae. Um, this will strengthen their immune system, reduce aggression, and improve their overall health. So any type of tang that you have, we do recommend you feed them seaweed. So I hope you guys enjoyed the fish that I chose to show you this week. I got a lot of cool stuff. Come check them out. I have things in varying sizes this week. I have a lot of small fish, medium fish, and a lot of large fish for some of your larger aquariums too. Um, again, make sure that you follow us on all social media, Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right, guys. Bye. Have a great week.